Hi, Michael. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm in the middle of a, of a phone call with with my uh, post office because I'm trying to send a package to the UK and it's not working. But we we can continue, and I don't mind having this informal. Let me just get my. I have a bunch of tapes I want to show you. Just okay. Second. Cool. All right, I got them. I got the tapes, but that's show and tell. We can do that a little bit later. From the three track, I would have thought that so the first generation would be the the new stereo master, if you like. Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, I would refer to that as the, you know, as far as the releases go, unless they came out with a three track release, that would be like the original kind of master, and the three track I would think of as the session tape. But the uh, the vinyl. The UHQ or vinyl is directly from the three track to a lacquer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, I've got both the UHQRs, the thirty three and the forty five, and it's it's you know it's stunningly kind of transparent and and immediate and you know in just sort of, sort of like the clarity of the of the you know the sound stage, so to speak. Um, but it is kind of. You know, to my ears, a li quite quite different. What I think of as the definitive is the first original US six I, right, in mono and stereo, because that's you know when back in well, I wasn't I wasn't around in nineteen fifty nine, but um, I was. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 that's that's the as far as I'm concerned, that's the original finished consumer ready piece of music, especially and, because the tape was fresh; it was a brand new tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any kind of subsequent mixing of the three track to the two track, you know, it, I mean, every time they do it, unless they use, well, I, I think back in the day, they probably mixed that down to two track and then used that and copied that and sent one to Philips or for the UK releases and one to wherever, you know, Brazil and Italy and whatever. Um, because I can't imagine them sending the three track out anywhere, you know, okay. They sent it to Bernie. Right. And it sat there for a long time. You have no idea how long it I used to go. <laughs> I used to go visit Bernie and a year later I'd go back and it was still there. I said, Bernie, what is that three track still doing there? He says, I, I call them, but they don't pick it up. Right. <laughs> so they've changed their minds about tapes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I you know, the you know, Chad's one is is, you know, a rem well, it's 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 a remarkably fabulous piece of vinyl um it hasn't for me you know i still play my original one it's different yeah. they're different yeah exactly they're different and i've still and i've got the original mono as well and you know the same with yep. many titles of that kind you know big titles i've got the original mono and the original stereo same with the beatles and, and you know it, it's they're, they're different you've kind of got to have them both they're, they're, yep. you know. but that's those are those are my you know bernie's one for me is like a forensic look into the recording rather than a it doesn't sound like the original, but better. It sounds different. And yeah, know. the original, you know, those those the vinyl in those days. A lot of the vinyl wasn't so great. The mm. cutting systems weren't as good as they are now. Um, you know, that think things have improved a lot. So as the tape deteriorates over time to a certain degree, uh, the equipment doing the mastering is better, and mm. and it's being cut for people who have better turntables, you know, all of like people who think that Rudy Van Gelder's original blue notes are great. That, that's not right. They're not great. They're not great. Uh, it's, funny, it's funny. I haven't, I haven't got many original blue notes to be honest, because they're so bloody expensive, but I've got quite a few original prestige. Like my miles is a big favorite. So yeah, I've got most of those originals and um, yeah, totally the vinyl quality wasn't, I mean, my modern jazz giant is, awful i mean it's, it's, noise, it's, noise it's, level. it's noisy vinyl and you can see you can actually see the noise in the vinyl it looks like it's got ground up paper in it you know yes and it, and it was com dynamically compressed so it would play on the turntables of the people that were the clientele yeah. of blue note and prestige and and rudy would have to roll the bass off uh, below like 50 hertz completely yeah. rolled around. and he boosted around 90 to give the sense that there was bass in the recording and people look at those recordings and this is the holy grail this is what burnt this is what rudy wanted to give us it wasn't what rudy wanted to give anybody no, 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 he had to no. do that he hated it that's why mm. when digital came out he loved he, he, now i can give you what i recorded so yeah. you know people who love those things okay whatever you like in this hobby is good as far as yeah, yeah 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 absolutely i mean i think that you know the new um 
you know, the, the, the Blue Note Tone Poets and Classic Series, and the, 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 I've only got two of the um, uh, OJCs, the new ones. You know, great. Kevin yeah. Gray. yeah, I mean, they're, I think those are amazing because, you you know, really you're getting a full-on audio file album for 20 or 30 pounds. Yep, and and uh, you know Kevin has upped his system so much that if you play the double forty fives that he cut for Chad uh, at um, when he had his cutting system over at RTI, the double forty fives compared to the new ones he's cutting at thirty three, the thirty threes are so much better. They're so yeah. much more transparent. They're so much more open. The bass is so much tighter. Everything's better because his yeah. his system is better. You know they are titles you want to get. That's why I started the Real Trail Rambler. Really, was when I first heard it was a. Oscar Peterson tape that Horch House did. And yeah. I just, oh, Jesus, you know, people need to hear this. You know, it, it, which it, one is it? Which did they do? Oscar Peterson, which? It's um, well, it's it's some stuff they did on our. I'll just grab it. Okay. Um, uh, it's stuff they did for an for the MPS label. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've got those records. Yeah, yeah the sort of uh, mellow moods and relax. Yeah exclusively to my friends those kind of things but it's just you know it's not my favorite oscar peterson album but it's just yeah. it was you know that was my first listen to you know what's your deck what, what deck do you have i've got a um well i've got a st I've, I've now i've got four i started off with a with a technics 1500 right which is a great consumer machine yeah. but yeah. but actually is the wrong eq for all for you know all these modern tapes right so then I got a Studer A807, which is very, which was surprised me how much better than the Technics it was. Yeah. Then I got a Studer A812, and the one I've currently got is an A80, and it's an original A80, oh. uh, made in 1970 and sold to EMI Hayes Middlesex. Ah, I love the <laughs> so that was, alone. So it was my record producing mates who come round, and I've had a couple of people round to sort of look at it, service it, tweak it, yeah. and. Um, Where'd you and where'd you buy it from? Well, I got it from I got it from a studio in London that was closing down. Um, that bought they bought it from uh, EMI, I think, in about nineteen ninety. You know, when I visited, I visited um, Universal in Hanover, Germany. They're no longer in Hanover; they moved everything to Berlin. But they had the big Berliner, uh, Emil Berliner Studios was there. And which they owned at that point, and all of the tape decks, decks that were in that facility were sitting in the hallway, yeah. covered in plastic. They were, they, and they were just trying to get rid of them, all of them. I mean, it's, you know, I worked on a on a film called Animal Olympics. I don't know if you ever heard of that movie, but it was an animated feature film. Yeah. And uh, so the voices were Gilda Radner, Billy Crystal, Harry Shearer, and me. <laughs> which yeah. is, but um, Graham Gouldman did all the music. Right. And, the music was wonderful. The sound was incredible. And we mixed it in surround sound in 1980. And the surround sound mix was spectacular. And then all the tapes were lost. All the elements were lost. And so the version that you can watch on Amazon Prime is from a, is from a mono optical track. And it sounds horrible. Yeah. And so last year, I got an email from some guys in Manchester. They were dumpster diving outside of Strawberry Studios. They, they were just throwing all these tapes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We found the master tapes to this movie, all of Graham Goldman's master tapes. Yeah. Yeah. So they took them and they digitized them for me, and they sound incredible. They were being thrown away. It's crazy. So now I'm trying to redo the soundtrack to the movie in stereo. Right. Put all the songs, the wonderful songs back that Graham wrote in stereo. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've had some. I mean, I've, I've got you know, I've got I've probably got about 500 tapes or so, but it's 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 some. Interesting things. I mean, I had again through the real to real rambler. I had, you know, to get some contact. I had a, basically the widow of a guy who used to work at Wally Hyder's. Uh -huh. She's like, I've got these tapes, and you know, I bought them for not much money. You know, wow. I've got. Do you remember the Crusaders? Uh, they did a live album called Scratch, right? And uh, I've got the original session tapes, the recordings of the Saturday night and the Friday night. Wow. Uh, which sound amazing. <laughs> of course they do. But, you know, that's, that's what's interesting about this. So, you know, guys like you and guys that are out there getting this stuff, that's fantastic. But yeah. I, I just, I'm afraid people are spending all this money on these machines. And what are they really getting a lot of the time? Are they getting Dark Side of the Moon? No, they're not. They're not getting Dark Side of the Moon on tape. I'm sorry. They're getting a DSD transfer turned into a tape because no one is selling that tape legally. Well, it's, you know, that's not... 
that's kind of um that's not legal or legit or gray market it's gray market it's fine i've no, i have no i mean i've heard stories and i i've heard things I, you know i was in bulgaria and there's a video on my old youtube channel from bulgaria where this guy bought some mastering house that had done a lot of legal stuff when the tapes were sent over there from yeah. the major labels to, to re, be released there and he got all these tapes he's got like thousands of you know all these tapes that were just stored at this mastering facility and if you go to his website you can buy bulgarian music and some other stuff but if you know the guy you can get copies of all this stuff and i visited a guy who was an attorney who had two studios mm -hmm. and that video is on my youtube channel and he had a wall of these tapes and he i said okay play me bridge over troubled water okay play me talking book and he took them out and you could hear that these were legit i mean they were really okay, yeah, yeah they were not yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of tapes out there that have probably come from, you know, unlicensed copies of a of, of a genuine master or production master or I mean, rarely the original master because that's, you know, it's normally when they get out into the studio world that that someone might make a copy. You know, what I don't understand, in all honesty, is why the major labels at this point don't start licensing and selling real to the real tapes what what's the loss to them at this point well, they, well digital well, masters to them are, are the master tapes yeah the master the cost of these tapes means that most people will not be paying 400 dollars for a tape if but if they can get a good record from the tape they'll buy that yeah and they should just license these tapes out uh and let them let them come out if, if i was you know i mean i just wish that they would sort of their their response would be sod it we'll do this ourselves in and you exactly know, nice and chad to do it chad could do it you know if he sold them for 500 or 600 i agree you know certainly i mean you know there's there's all these gray market tapes out there and you know i don't think i can talk about them or recommend them i'm not going to tell people right. on youtube like oh if you go to this guy in russia it, it's a lot of money to spend on a machine to play mm, a lot of s speculative who knows what they are tapes but you know it's 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 an interesting side a uh, part of the hobby you've obviously gotten into it on on a yeah you know, i mean it, 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 that's it, a one you're a one-off guy <laughs> you know that's the difference. <laughs> and i know there's other guys like you out there that are getting these tapes but it's not really a commercial people say why don't you cover the tapes and i don't because the legitimate ones that you can really talk about are how many are there 20 <laughs> oh, well, I mean, no there's, there's there's about i think there's about 500 titles now but really wow so those are kind of you know obscure artists you've never heard of and this is although yeah it's not re-releases of classic albums which is right. what you know we all really really want I, I... I'll, I'll say what i have here okay so, so just see so, so so this is uh these are the this is from fantasy studios from wally hyder yeah and these are the songs from uh journey that were used in the movie tron okay yeah and this is a copy of the master tape because yep. this, this is what we used um so it's 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 the real deal i know i know what it is because we yeah. used, uh this is uh yeah. this is a copy of the tron soundtrack <laughs> that wendy carlos made for me yeah and 1982 That's yeah one, one side and then this is the other side yeah no, no, this is a different this is a different project of her songs of this and earth that she that she made for me so it's a one-to-one -one dub of the master she's very particular about what what she did this is uh let's see what's what's this one oh this is the, this is side a of tron yeah and then i have one other one here and i have a few other things but this this is from Sterling Sound. This okay, nice. Of one track of uh, two songs from uh, Marty Jones. I don't know if you've ever heard of Mar Marty Jones. I've but heard she's the really, name, but it's, I'm not familiar. Really good talent. Yeah. Ken Kessler loves her. And, and so they sent me this. This is right from Sterling, copy of The Master. So those I know are real tapes, and they sound really fantastic. It would be great to put it out on tape. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I don't know. It's a, uh, it's it's obviously a niche, very, 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 very niche thing. But it's it's you know the potential sonic sonic quality is is incredible. So, I'm. Um, Do you have how's your how's your collection of uh, of like commercially released high speed seven and a half IPS dupe tapes? Have you got many of those? Oh well, the sort of the the, the things that were actually available. I've I've got. 
I've got tons of those, and they're maybe contributing- fifty or so. I haven't gotten. I haven't. Ten's got hugely into that, and it's, uh, it's absolutely taking hundreds of thousands, even. I've, I've got, maybe got fifty or sixty. I, yeah, I've got about fifty or sixty, and I got Belafonte at Carnegie Hall from the original. It sounds fantastic, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fun threading those up every once in a while and playing them, but but uh, you know the records. If you have a really good turntable, the records still sound. Uh, awesome so uh, i'm oh, yeah yeah it. i mean i think yeah they, they sound i mean it's yeah i mean I've, I've got a i've got a master reference with a i've got mia jima cartridges i really like them yeah they're, they're fun and they're um it's um but i've got an aesthetics io phono stage so it's a good you know it's a good front end if not yeah. world beating um yeah. but i think you know the, the the seven and a half inch ips tapes you can they're definitely hi-fi i mean until maybe 10 years ago i you know i thought reel to reel machines looked incredibly cool but you know i didn't actually expect them to sound that great yeah oh it's, yeah. Uh, i've got i got a revox g36 that i got at a garage sale for 40 bucks which is yeah. a good deal sounds great and i and i have a, an a700 that i'm having rebuilt right now okay yeah It'll be good. I mean, I don't. I I have no room for a giant studer. <laughs> I don't no. have <laughs> Do well, not have room. space. Yeah, the room room is. Uh, yeah, mine mine are. And I don't have yeah, enough. Yeah. I don't have sufficient number of tapes to make it worthwhile. You know, so mm-hmm. I'll I'll stick with the the commercial tapes I can find at garage sales, which which I still can. And then mm-hmm. Roy Halley gave me a bunch of tapes. Like he gave me. This is a Brahms. Uh, from a Columbia master that he had, he, yeah. he, he did a bunch of classical recordings before he got involved with Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. And he's a bunch of these copies that are, that are nice. And so, you know, it's fun, but yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, the kind of blue there's, well, there was four original masters, if you like, there was four original tapes made all of the same generation. Right. And, uh, you know, come, I mean, whenever they turn, whenever it was that, um, they discovered the first three track was running fast or slow, rather, whatever it was, you know, uh, and went to the backup tape. I mean, I would much rather have had a copy of that because that would be, you know, in, that's 30 years after the event and is a fresh tape. Well, the Classic Records put out uh, a double LP set with one record being the original speed, which is wrong. Yeah. And then the second record, it's only a couple of tracks that were that were at the wrong speed. Yeah. And and those uh are now you can get that on the same record at the right speed. Yeah. You know, it's a quarter tone difference, I think. Mm-hmm. Which is not look, the fact of the matter is all these old tape machines back in the day were running at different speeds. It, 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 that's just a fact. They were it, every day it would run slightly different. You yeah. know, beggars backwards at the wrong speed. Right, right, right. That's why it sounds thick. It sounds thick because it, it's it's the tape ran too fast, so it came out too slow, or whatever makes it sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, gets confusion. <laughs> all, all these tape machines. You know, I interviewed Phil Brown, which was a great. And that was just so much fun to go up to his cottage and interview him. And he, you know, he he said these machines every day would run at a different speed. He was doing all those great uh, talk talk albums, and he said we'd come into the studio and start playing the tapes, and it would be at the wrong speed because every day that those machines uh, would decide what speed they wanted to run at <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah definitely i've got to say actually well because <laughs> i noticed this on many a video of yours uh i'm pointing here at my computer but the the uh gillian welsh soul journey you've got sat two down on the in there it's an am- she, i mean their recordings her they are amazing aren't they yeah because they're just pure analog simple recordings you know yeah he's a great he's uh He's a he's a devotee of of good analog recordings. Yeah, yeah, cool. Like on where people are. Yeah. Boy, I just reviewed the new rough mix that that Universal put out. That was that was redone by John Astley, and it's it's vile. It's terrible. I just I I attacked it mercilessly. It's just <laughs> the original is so good. It's yeah. such a good record, and don't mess with it it's it doesn't need it just needs to be you need to take the tape and and make a record out of it it's it's that good yeah Doug smashed it a, and this guy's father was the guy that did the strings for street in the city he he engineered he he arranged the strings 
Mm. And the sound of the original, the strings are beautiful. And the sound on this reissue is it's harsh and it's it's compressed and it's it, yeah. <laughs> it's my word. Yeah. I, I'm at the age where I don't care anymore. I'm just saying what telling people what I think. The Stones did that one album that Don Was produced that was done in analog and it sounds awful. No, it's just, no. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I just care what it sounds like. And for some reason the old records sound that were cut, done analog sound better left alone in analog and and yeah some... yeah 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 definitely. okay man i think this, this is yeah. fun this was fun so do you go do you go to record fairs or are you done with that record fairs do you know what i don't really anymore i've kind of in fact lp buying i, I did well i say i've got an empire of, i don't know maybe 200 lps because i'm terrible <laughs> oh that is terrible how dare you <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of the, the 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 trouble is i've reached a point where things coming in i've got to, i've constantly got to make an out pile so i'm yeah. now you see what's yeah. going on here if i show you the floor it's 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 ridiculous yeah I, yeah I more than i can play and then i get guilty about it because i don't get to play everything and then mm -hmm. and then i and then i um it, I just, it's too much. Yeah. And, I, and, and the, um, the, the, the UHQRs and the MoFis and these things that come in big boxes. And it's just like, you can't, I, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm too much of a sucker. I can't not buy them because I just, I've got to know what it sounds like. Yes, and, of course. And so often you get it and it's like, ah. Oh. The MoFis are not, a lot of the MoFis are the original. And then you've got this thing that takes up that much shelf space. You just bought it for 200 pounds or something. And yeah. You know, what do you right, a lot of the MoFi's are not that good. They're just not. And I go through them, and I've there's they did a good job with the Miles catalog. I thought because the originals yeah. were not good sounding, but boy, I just went I just went through a whole bunch of them again. Uh, like the the Love Forever Changes, one of my favorite records of all time. Mm. Their version is just just not good. They they still boosting the bass and boosting the yeah. treble, yeah, the mid range out, and it's just uh, it's not right. No. I think a lot of it is that it's it's, it's the remastering they do. It's just a different, you know, and, and some people like that boosted bass and fat, you know, fat. They want it to sound different than what you're used to. So, oh, it's different. So then they confuse different with better, and that's yeah. Yeah. often the case. Some are good, some are not good. And yeah. have you heard any of the ERCs? Again, I, I, no, I haven't actually. Some of them are great. I'm just going to do a comparison of. Of this and this, that's okay. Now that would be interesting because yeah, the, the the OJC one of those is is. I mean, I've got an original of that, and it's it's super, really. It's because because what you're listening to is Kevin Gray's mastering system. That's what you're listening to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. hi-fi in reverse, you know. Yeah, so yeah. like his hi-fi, that's what you're hearing, and his hi-fi has gotten way better lately. It's it's yeah. absolutely fantastic now. So all these records, the tapes are in great shape. So to cut them again and plate them and press them correctly. So I'm putting out a jazz album, by the way. I uh, know I heard, yeah, I heard, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited by it. This kid is phenomenal, and uh, and Rufus yeah. Reed is playing bass on it, yeah. who's a great bassist. And I've got the lacquers here, and they, the lacquers sound great. And uh, the mastering is done on Doug Sachs's system, and yeah. I think it's going to be great. And I, I, after the fact, I found out that Christian McBride is a huge fan of this kid, and he's been following this kid since he was 11 years old. Oh, okay. Nice. So he's looking when this album comes out, he wants a copy right away. I was told by his people. So <laughs> if, I, if I can get Christian McBride to review this record, I think it would be pretty good. Cool, so cool, cool, cool. I'm excited awesome. about that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, look, I'll right. just get on. You too. Great talking with you.